The strengths and weaknesses of different types of 400G coherent transceivers were highlighted in a talk today at the Market Focus from Timothy Monks, Principal Analyst at IHS Market. He joins me now. Timothy, thanks for talking to us. Yet, Take us through the pros and cons. So Brian, there's a, the 400 gig plus coherent market, is a, it's a large market and it, it spans from DCI, which are short fat pipes, all the way to subsea systems going trans Pacific distances. So you're talking about 80 kilometers to 1200 kilometers. And really there's, there's multiple solutions that, that address this. Um, on the high performance side, you have solutions that use embedded uh, transponders and these can run multi-rate right now they're running anywhere from four, 100 gig to 400 gig you're starting to see new products coming out going out to 800 gig and soon in 2020 we'll see products going at 800 gig and 1200 gig so 1.2 terabits and then you go down to the other side where you're looking at point-to-point -point unamplified links primarily connecting data centers together uh, in campus and urban environments and these need to be very focused very cheap uh, not cheap but that high value if you will and uh, and these these uh, are are looking at just you know transmitting at 400 gigs so a 400 gig ZR uh, is is a product that's meant to address that that's something that's been standardized by OIF and we expect those products to start hitting the market in 2020 um, I expect that the 400 gig ZR will dominate those markets by 2021 2022 uh, probably 2022 um, but then the, on the high performance, these embedded transponders will, will dominate those markets. And those will play all the way down to the data centers because they can be used from DCI all the way to subsea. And we're seeing, you know, subsea links being deployed directly from the data center as well as long haul and metro. But then there's this middle ground. And this middle ground, people have called it 400 gig ZR plus. Um, and it's been ill-defined, so it's been holding back uh, um, investment. We're starting to see that being better defined. Um, we've had the Open Rotom Initiative by AT&T and an ecosystem there. That's more focused on you know, multi-rate 100 gig to 400 gig uh, for carrier networks, traditional telecom networks where they want OTN functionality and some of this framing that's important. And they're less interested in faceplate density. Uh, for the ZR, they need faceplate density and they want to be able to go directly from an edge router to an edge router in two separate data centers. So, you know, as I see it, ZR will, will dominate those applications in 2022, 2023. Uh, embedded solutions will continue to dominate the high performance long haul subsea market. And the battleground is really in this middle ground between the ZR and Open Rotom versus the embedded solutions. Okay, now you also talked about various market sizes in optical transport. So tell us a bit more about that. So, so with those different applications, there's different market sizes. Now, the DCI application is the fastest growing market, um, you know, but the embedded type solutions, they work across all the markets. They, you know, they work best at the higher performance applications, but they will work all the way down and do DCI. So where people want really short, fat pipes, uh, they're, they're a nice solution for that. Um, in this middle ground from Metro Regional, uh, you see this Open ZR Plus type thing or in, in data center centric networks, and then you see open Rotom type solutions for uh, telecom service provider networks. But then the really focused point to point links, uh, you see ZR Plus. Um, we think that ZR Plus will be somewhere in the 10 to 15 percent of the amount of ports. Um, the middle ground is, is the biggest area, which will have somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 50 to 60 percent of the ports and then the long haul uh, submarine will be uh, the, the rest of the market. Okay, thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome, thank you.